The second Gaia data release contains, for the first time, radio velocities obtained with the RVS spectrograph on board the Gaia satellite. Radio velocities for 7.2 million Gaia stars are published in this release. Uh, it is uh, the largest existing catalogue of radio velocities and then the only one covering the whole sky. The distribution of the sky is shown in this figure. The projection is in galactic coordinates with a pixel scale of 0.2 square degrees. The majority of stars belong to the Milky Way, but we also see some bright stars in the Magellanic Clouds. Although this catalogue is already unique, it is small compared to the one we will publish in the final Gaia data release. The year 2 is the largest existing catalogue, but it is, on the other side, very small compared to the final Gaia catalogue. Of, the, of radio velocity, which is expected to contain uh, 150 million of uh, stars. Uh, almost 10% of the Gaia star will hopefully have a radio velocity. The current DR2 radio velocity catalogue is relatively small at this stage because we only process stars brighter than GRVS of 12th magnitude. The RVS acquires spectra down to GRVS magnitude 16.2, so with this magnitude cut, we have removed more than 95% of the spectra. These will be processed for future releases. The magnitude cut has been applied primarily because, with only 22 months of data in DR2, there are insufficient focal plane transits to determine reliable radio velocities for the fainter stars. We did this magnitude cut because uh, the find star spectra have low signal to noise and we need to combine many spectra in order to obtain a good uh, radial velocity. Apart from the selection in magnitude, overlapping spectra of neighbouring stars are also removed during the processing. On average, about 40% of all the windows allocated on the CCDs are overlapped by other spectra. The functionality to deblend such spectra has not yet been implemented in the pipeline. The next figure shows the completeness of the RVS catalogue as a function of the G magnitude. We note that the completeness drops to zero beyond G equals 13, reflecting the cut in magnitude mentioned before. The completeness is lower for the bright stars where the saturation occurs. Those spectra are excluded from the pipeline and no radio velocity is currently computed, even if only a single pixel is saturated. In the sky map, we see the completeness is lower in the regions of high stellar density. This can occur when the onboard limit of 72 readout samples per CCD is reached. This limit was set to deliver a maximum source density of 35,000 sources per square degree. The bright star windows have priority, but many windows are allocated to spurious detections, meaning the limit is reached sooner and affects the bright stars. This table shows the spectroscopic pipeline products available in DR2. We provide six products from the spectroscopic pipeline. The rate of velocity and its uncertainty, the main products. The number of transits used to determine the rate of velocity, plus the three atmospheric parameters, effective temperature, log G surface gravity, and metallicity of the template used to determine the rate of velocity. Note that these three parameters should not be used as estimates of the physical properties of the Gaia stars. The radial velocity is the median of the radial velocities derived at each transit across the focal plane. To compute a radial velocity, at least two transits are required. This figure shows the final distribution of the number of transits per source in DR2. The median number of transits is 7, the mode is 5, the minimum is 2 and the maximum 200. You should keep in mind that the number of transits for the sources observed by the RVS is, by design of the focal plane, about 40% fewer than for the other instruments. The radial velocity error is the uncertainty on the median, to which 0.11 km per second has been added in quadrature to take into account the calibration flaw. From the radial velocity uncertainty in the number of transits, the dispersion of the transit measurements and an indication of the variability can be inferred. The radial velocities with uncertainties greater than 20 km per second have been removed from DR2. For Gaia DR2, we did a cut, so we have removed all the stars, all the radial velocity of the stars, having a radial velocity error larger than 20 km per second. These are removed low signal stars, but also very high amplitude 
the variable for which in any case the radial velocity was not good. Concerning the template atmospheric parameters, the determination of the rate of velocity of the observed sources relies on the comparison of the RVS spectrum with a synthetic template. The template is a synthetic spectrum that has been convolved with the RVS response and should be as close as possible to the noiseless observed spectrum. In particular, it should have atmospheric parameters, TEF, log G, and FEH, as similar as possible to the observed stars. The DR2 values of TEF were not available to the spectroscopic pipeline at the time of processing. The pipeline instead uses literature parameters for the target when available. But for the majority of the stars, the pipeline finds the closest template among a pre-selected set of 28 templates. This method results in template mismatches for both hot stars, above the 7000 Kelvin, and cool stars, below 3500 Kelvin. The radial velocities of stars with RV template TEF outside this range have been removed from DR2. They will be reintroduced in DR3 when the spectroscopic pipeline will be able to use the stellar parameters estimated by the CU8 APSIS pipeline. To estimate systematic errors, we used radio velocities from external catalogues, from which we have selected stars with constant radio velocities. This figure shows the median of the residuals between the DR2 radio velocities and those of the external catalogues. The residuals for different catalogues are shown in different colors, showing that the systematic error depends in part on the catalog used. But there is also a consistent offset, suggesting that some of the systematic comes from the RVS. The red line indicates the pre-launch end of mission requirement in the systematic errors of 300 meters per second. We see that already in this first radio velocity release, the end of mission requirement has been met for stars with GRVS brighter than about 10. The next two figures show the precision as a function of magnitude. The precision is estimated as the median of the radial velocity error over the magnitude bins. The left figure shows that the precision increases with the number of transits used, as one would expect. The red horizontal line shows the pre-launch end of mission requirement for a solar type star. We see that this requirement is already met in this release for GRVS less than 11.5 and is exceeded for the brighter stars. The right figure shows that the rate of velocity precision depends on the effective temperature of the star. We can see, as expected, that the precision is better for the cooler stars, since they have more spectral lines and therefore provide more information for the rate of velocity determination. The final figure shows a selection of RVS spectra to illustrate their variation with spectral type. Within the RVS wavelength range, cool M-type stars show absorption bands of titanium oxide, while the intermediate temperature stars are dominated by the calcium lines. For hotter stars, hydrogen lines start to appear, and we get a template mismatch with log G, leading to imprecise values for the radial velocity. For the first time, uh, the, we have the radial velocity of a sample of Gaia stars, measured using the spectra obtained with the Gaia velocity spectrometer that uh, brings uh, the full three-dimensional information on the star motions. And uh, of course, I think it dramatically improves the study of the Milky Way. Mm -hmm.